So since it's not a stand-up comedy, I'm not going to ask you to, uh, to shout uh, good afternoon with me. Uh, but uh, the intention is there. It's Friday. Um, we are really happy to have you here. We really would like to thank you for, for having come to this, uh, to this small gathering, to enjoy some food with us, and uh, to discuss about migration. But uh, the positive side of, uh, of migration, migration in a, in a nice way. Uh, which is a bit of a, of a chance uh, change from what we tend to hear about migration lately. Um, let's say we're not going to hide the fact that uh, it's a high profile issue. You all may be following the, what I would call the global compact on migration saga. Um, with uh, every day the news on who's in and who's out. Um, I must say, I look forward to the Marrakesh summit uh, to be over, uh, so we can start uh, the actual work on the Global Compact on Migration. Um, it's a bit of a, I would say, an elephant in the room, but it's not something that uh, we can also uh, go away from. There are in that document a number of commitments. Whether you're in or out, when you talk about migration, this is a great mapping of what migration is about in all its complexity, in a balanced way, in a way that respects sovereignty, and most of all, in a way that is non-binding. Uh, but in a way also that puts cooperation as the only way forward when you want to deal with migration issues. But what is important for us today, for this event, is that the Global Compact on Migration is also very much uh, based or and trim in the Sustainable Development Goal. And for a long time, this relationship between migration and development has been also one of these um, ongoing discussion that is not that easy to, to explain. There is a relationship between migration and development in one way, between development policies and their impact on migration. And there is a need to do quite a bit of work to try to better understand what is this, what are those uh, linkages between migration and development. And we have it now, thanks uh, to the great work of, uh, of, of, of a lot of colleagues. And here we have uh, Cecil Rian with us, uh, who has led to Salesforce on the side of IOM, um, together with Simon Giger from the um, SDC is Development yes. Corporation. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Who has also supported us together with DEFCO. Uh, so we'd like to very much thank you for having come here, for having uh, taken the time, and they will they will tell you a bit more about what what are we talking about when we are talking about this nexus between migration and development. And let's remember that it's not something that can be easily uh, squared, that can be simplified. Um, the Migration as a phenomenon can be positive or negative. It depends a lot on the context and on the different factors. On my side, um, dealing mostly with the um, forced migration side of uh, the spectrum, um, we know what development means when it comes to forced displacement, what can be done. We also know that sometimes it can have negative consequences that it's also to be addressed. So it's not to portray anything in a, in a rosy way or in a simplified way, but really to try to understand the real complexity around those issues. So without further ado, I'm giving you the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrice, and um, very warm welcome to all of you. Um, so we're very excited to be uh, launching here in Brussels uh, in front of our important partners from, from the European Commission as well as uh, colleagues from the UN uh, agencies. And, and further uh, beyond uh, these guides that I hope you all have in your in your hands. Um, that is very much, you know, the, the first attempt uh, that has been made to really uh, articulate the 2030 agenda with migration, um, and that has a very meaningful, um, you know, significance. And this is what I'm going to try to explain uh, in my presentation, uh, which is really going to be mostly aimed at walking you through these guides and, of course, its main messages and what it actually does for, for its users. So I have a PowerPoint, but hopefully it's not going to be a boring one. Um, so basically what, uh, what this picture uh, is telling you 
um, is very much that migration is relevant uh, for all the, the goals uh, that we have in the agenda. So traditionally we've been thinking, first of all, that it's been a major breakthrough that migration has been integrated in the agenda. Actually, it's the first time. So far, if you think of the, of the MDGs, the predecessors to the SDGs, migration was nowhere to be found. And the gold spell has been for a long period of time that actually migration is a development failure. So, you know, rethinking migration as an enabler for development is something that actually took time and effort. And really the fact that it is now squarely within the agenda 2030 is a major achievement with enormous promises. But first of all, so let's, let's have a look at, at the picture that we have here. What we have tried to do in the context of this guide is really to articulate all the entry points that exist between migration in all its manifestations. So here we are, of course, talking not only about you know, uh, migration that is made out of choice, but as well we're also looking into displacement, we're also looking into uh, all types of, uh, of, uh, of migrants themselves, so looking at the children, looking at the women, looking at the men, so really zooming into all those different situations and circumstances in which people are on the move. And basically, you know, going through the entire uh, agenda, going goal one by one, and articulating which are those direct and indirect entry points. It is very clear that there is one specific direct entry point, uh, which is uh, the goal 10.7, that is under uh, the fighting inequalities or reduced inequalities. So we are here. And I think it's very meaningful, in fact, that migration has been put there, because it is clearly a signal that actually a lot of the reasons why people migrate is because there is a fundamental problem of inequalities within societies and between societies. So it's already giving us a very good hint in terms of what are the kind of policy intervention that one should be thinking of putting in place if we are to help with safe, orderly migration, which is really the, the essential message of, that is uh, articulated in 10.7. So moving on, um, I think what we, what, we, what we have to understand is that the significance of migration is being included in the 2030 agenda. What does it mean? It means that we simply cannot do uh, business as usual as we've been doing so far. It means that we really have to, uh, to seize that tremendous opportunity to finally connect development and uh, migration policy making. Uh, we finally have to connect actors. So it's really thinking about, you know, when we do, when we work on migration, we should stop only thinking through migration policies. We have to start thinking through education policies, health policies, urbanization policies, housing policies, so on and so forth. So really, the, actually, how we can define the SDGs is that it is a formidable declaration of interdependence. So let's understand through the agenda all these inter interdependencies that exist when it comes to migration, and let's be able to articulate them in policy making and in concrete programming on the ground. And that has really, when you actually see the full potential of this, this is very transformative indeed. So, I think what is really important uh, is also to, to really seize another important element, which is the universality of the SDGs. The SDGs are to be applied both in what we call the Global South and what we call the Global North. And that is important because it's also an opportunity for us to articulate that indeed migration does have a development impact in destination countries. So it is also a way to articulate this phenomenon in a different manner than how it's been articulated so far. So we, it's not only about looking at migration in, in receiving countries through the angle of integration, but it's much more than that. The promises are much bigger than that. So seizing the universality of the SDGs applied to migration provides tremendous opportunity also to change potentially the narrative of migration, which as we know, and as was recalled by my colleague Patrice, is actually quite negative, unfortunately, and particularly here uh, in, in Europe. Um, so in, in general terms, uh, moving on, I think it's really uh, forcing us to uh, go deeper in our understanding about how migration connects and interacts and impact other development uh, sectors or uh, parts of policy making. 
And to be frank with you, we don't necessarily have the evidence base right now to actually fully uh, you know, apprehend this complexity and, and all of those connections. But this is what this agenda gives us as an opportunity to do. And if we aren't able to do that, it means that we'll be able collectively, as international community, to do a much better job at working on migration, at impacting migration, and really looking at all the different arrays of, of, of related uh, issues. So it's really about going beyond governance as usual. What does it mean concretely? It means that if you are doing policy making on migration within a given country, it's about connecting with other line ministries. It's about understanding you know, how the policy making you do, you give, you're doing in a very specific area is going to impact other areas. And being able to actually make this a de facto or like you know the, the normal way of working, not something you think sometimes of doing because you know it's good to have a whole of governance approach from time to time. No, it's something we need to be doing and establishing systematically, and that's why we're very happy to be uh, you know have the privilege of being uh, you know uh, of working with the Swiss Development Corporation in this critical issue that is policy coherence on migration, and. You know, if we are to be able to do policy coherence on migration, it means that we will be doing our job in supporting the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Because there is no doubt that if we don't look at the specific situation of men and women and children and migrants, we will not be able to fulfill the promises of the 2030 Agenda. So migration, though it might not appear in plain words in all the goals, is relevant for all the goals. And this means that we cannot do governance the way we've been doing it so far on migration anymore. So I think it's, it's, that's a very strong message that I, I hope we are sending with this guide. So now maybe turning more specifically to the guide itself and how it's structured and what it can do for you. So basically um, it has uh, different, uh, different components. Um, and what you can see here on the screen uh, is that there is a, a part of it uh, at the end that is in the pocket, uh, at the back of the document, which does something quite useful, I hope, uh, which is basically to look at all the goals and for relevant targets that are, you know, important from, from a migration point of view. So hopefully, you know, for you, migration uh, policy makers or development policy makers, this could become a very useful way for you to systematically articulate those connections when you're thinking of programming, when you're thinking about partnership, who should I work with in order to impact these, is these issues. So hopefully, you know, this guide is going to be providing you with those clues, with those articulations, with those answers. Uh, so we hope that would be uh, important and useful for you. So moving on. Um, this is really what the, the, the guides, who is it for? Uh, so I started giving some answers to the question I just asked. But I want to also make a very specific point, is that we think of migration as something that is really in the prerogative of national governments. Migration is about national policy making, it's about national policy implementation. And we also know for a fact, and particularly as development actors, that it's not quite right that actually the impact of migration and on development is most and foremost felt at territorial level within cities that have become, as we all know, the destination of choice for migrants all around the world. Migration is most and foremost these days an urban phenomenon. Uh, it's also in the hands of local and regional authorities, so you have, you know, at the provincial level, at the region, regional level, depending, of course, on the type of administrative structures you have in country. So this is why this guide has been really designed to support national as well as local policymakers understand you know, how basically to work with this agenda. This agenda is very complex, it's very, it's intertwined, it's this declaration of inter interdependence I was talking about, so it means quite a, a lot of resources um, to be able to make those articulations. And, and this is what this, this guide is trying to do, is really to tell for policymakers uh, as you are embarked in implementing the SDGs, what are the migration considerations that one should take into account? Uh, what are those connections that you can make in order to trans tra translate that into you know, new legislation, in order to translate that into an in initiative or a program? Or, so basically this is really uh, the, how to do it. Basically. And we are very much mindful of the fact that 
there are many other processes on the SDGs that exist in countries. So what this guide does is that really helping to plug this work on migration with those countrywide exercise on implementation of the SDGs. So it's not duplicative, it's not yet another thing at the top of other things. It's really trying to really mainstream this into what is being done in terms of uh, the government's efforts to uh, to implement the agenda and fulfill their commitment towards that agenda. Um, so this guide also exists in, um, in, a, in, a, in a, let's say, electronic version um, through um, a network, I don't know if you've heard of it, that is the M4DNet, the Migration for Development Network, which actually we launched uh, uh, as an interagency initiative uh, led by, by UNDP uh, that was called the UN Joint Migration and Open Initiative, which was funded by the European Union, and which really has become the largest hub on migration and development worldwide. So within that, um, that setting, within, on, the, on the platform, on the M40Net, you can find actually, uh, you know, in a dynamic manner, all those uh, references. So we hope this will really contribute as well to uh, you know, make this information easily available and digestible uh, for as many people as possible around the world. Um, so going back to, uh, to the now, so thinking more about the interconnection that exists between um, migration and the 2030 agenda. So now more diving a bit more into the substance of things, having talked about, about the guide itself. Um, so you will have now on the screen uh, those direct connections uh, between uh, migration and the 2030 agenda. What do we mean by direct connections? It's literally where the word migration or migrants uh, or victims of trafficking, uh, all the related issues to migration are actually spelled out. So you will, you will see that it appears in quite a lot of instances in the agenda under quality education, under gender equality, decent work and economic growth, reduced inequalities, we've mentioned that before, peace, justice and, and strong institutions, and there you have the really important aspect as well of, of Goal 13 on partnership. So this is where we have those clear entry points, that is student, student mobility, human trafficking and exploitation, labor employment, uh, uh, migration, sorry, unemployment, migration governance, remittances and migration data. So, and maybe let me pause a little bit on migration data because this is really one of the big challenges that we have and it's really important that it is captured in the agenda because as you know to do sound policy making one needs sound data but unfortunately we have to, to admit that in the field of migration these sound data are dearly missing and this is something where through partnership we do need uh, to, to fill that gap. Uh, and that's very important. So already, you know, if you have to consider just the direct connections that exist between migration and the 2030 agenda, we have very useful and very important entry points that really call for the international community to pull its resources and, and efforts. Now, let me move on to the um, what we call the indirect references to migration. Um, and this is where, you know, we go back to the point that I was trying to make earlier that migration is relevant for the entirety of the agenda. Um, so here, it's very clear, those are on the, on, the, on the screen, poverty and growth, very important, social protection, health, education, gender, children, cities, climate change, clearly, climate change, citizenship and identity, and partnership for development. So those, those are the, the cross-cutting issues that we are clearly articulating in this guide. So let me maybe go now a bit deeper on, on some of those issues, because um, I'm not going to go through all of them for the interest of time, but I just want to kind of give you a glimpse about what is it that we're actually talking about using the SDG lenses. So let's talk about the issue of health. Health is a major uh, you know, element of, uh, of what we do actually in IOM because it is of major relevance uh, for uh, the well-being of migrants because migrants do face uh, differentiated health risks uh, and often have low access to, to health care. And this is why you know, service provisions uh, in the sector of health really have to be mindful of those specific vulnerabilities, those specific needs, and as well as those specific risks that are associated with human mobility. So basically, it's just showing that, uh, you know, through health, and I think the uh, uh, um, migration length, it's about improving distribution of global health workforce, 
It's about improving reproductive health for migrants. It's about improving universal health coverage for migrants, but in general, and as well including uh, migrants in HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other health efforts. So it's just showing you, you know, how these efforts need to be mainstreamed in other, you know, type of health intervention and why these are so relevant. You know, why migration is so relevant to, to kind of, you know, capture what needs to be done as international community on health. So maybe now let's move to another one, which is education. I think it's very clear that roughly one in 70 children worldwide in a country, in a different, that live in a, live in a different country than their own. This is a ta staggering picture. So if we are to work in the education sector without thinking about the needs and the specific vulnerabilities of children on the move, then we are missing a big part of what needs to be done in that policy making area. So again, you know, it's really about expanding education opportunities, increasing student mobility, which is a very important element that we need to be capturing, as well addressing the global supply and demand of skills, because of course then it connects to, to employment and how we recognize the skills of migrants. On, and again, also improving education for migrant children. So what we're trying to say here is basically, you know, all the ramifications, just trying to evidence those ramifications, and again, what does it mean in terms of policy making? So I could go on and on that we, of course, have poverty and growth as well as, as climate change. I think maybe we can stop on the one on cities, uh, which is really uh, also building on what I was explaining before, that migration has become most and foremost an urban phenomenon. So actually one could think that most of policy making in the field of migration should be about urbanization policies these days. Um, so, but are we, are policy makers at city level completely aware of those complexities, of the fact that they have to take that into account? Maybe not. And this is why, you know, the so the avenue of the SDGs is so important to help them connect the dots, as well as other important uh, agendas like the new urban agenda, which is uh, an important uh, element because it does also acknowledge migration. So it's about, in that sense, what? Integrating uh, migration in local development planning. It's about adjusting services that are provided to the wider population or for the wider community. So it has a lot of ramifications. So once you're able to kind of articulate that and do it against the backdrop of the SDGs as an overall commitment of the international community, then your policy making and your understanding about what you're trying to achieve becomes better. So it's not so much about migration anymore, but it's just thinking of migration as an important element of this uh, bigger picture. So now turning to the most more practical part of the guide. So what I've described in a nutshell, and then that's the first part of the guide, which is more zooming into those uh, connections. The second part is really about uh, basically, thank you, um, you know, going through a, st a four-step approach that we, it's absolutely not uh, compulsory, so it's just we are suggesting this as a methodology, which is really about who are the actors that you have to bring around the table to be able to implement uh, uh, this process, how you go at, at the very difficult job of prioritizing, because you have this big agenda, all these di different issues. So we're helping through the guide uh, the, the users to kind of zoom onto those, uh, those acceleration points that actually make sense in their given context in order to really uh, address what is the most important for, for, for them. So the step of prioritization is, is, comes with tools and so on that you will find in the guide. Then we, we move on to the issue of course implementation. So who should be implementing this? Uh, what are the kind of resources that you need? Uh, the, again, you know, the, how then you would monitor and report on your work. And that's really important and that goes back to the issue of data. So you will see in the guide there's a lot of attention that is paid to this critical issue of, of data. So again, this four steps of approach is absolutely not uh, prescriptive. Uh, we're just trying to you know, propose a pattern for, for, for action. And you will also find in the guide in the last part that this methodology has been tested. So it's not we take it talking about something that just came out of our mind and just aspirational, but actually it's been really tested in four countries. And what you have in the guide is the outcome of those processes in those four countries. And what is it that it came up with? So it's really, we try to evidence you know, clearly 
the end purpose and, and outcome of, of doing this work. So, and I will finish with that. Basically, having said everything I said, <laughs> this is having an impact on the way we work in I1. I mean, as you know, we are the, the UN Migration Agency. Uh, we are on, on, on the verge, indeed, of having a very important new framework uh, for, for our work, which is a global compact uh, on migration, just a few days away from, from, from now, hopefully. We're all going to be uh, you know, embarking to a week in Marrakesh for the Migration uh, Week. Um, and, and basically, you know, this means really for us as IOM that we need to, to kind of change very much the way we've been working so far and really being able to articulate much better the work we do in terms of understanding better what, is, what are the development contexts in which we work and how that should be influencing the way we program and, and design our interventions. But as well, you know, what is our development footprint as an organization? So what is it that we do that actually also have an impact on those longer term development uh, you know, processes or contexts? Um, so we are particularly uh, right now working on um, defining uh, an IOM-wide or an institutional uh, strategy on migration and sustainable development. And we really want this to be an important entry point to engage in very meaningful partnership with our UN colleagues. And all of that, of course, uh, happening in the backdrop of the implementation or rollout of the UN development system reform, uh, which is really going to, to, to help us as, as UN to work in a more joined up manner. So our role, and now that we're doing all this work, is really to help ourselves to plug in a meaningful manner, in a helpful manner for the rest of the, the UN system, our specific expertise and, and what is it that we can actually contribute to. Um, so, and also we want to be a bit more, more articulate in terms of how we, you know, impact the implementation of the SDGs. So being able to communicate that and make this more visible uh, to, to, to our membership and to our partners. So really, it's a declaration of interdependence and partnership. So we really see this for IOM as an entry point for maybe some new, way, new ways of working. And we are very excited about it. And uh, I will now you know, hand on the, 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 the floor to Simon Giger, who is the, 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 the head of the uh, global program of the Swiss Development Corporation on Migration uh, and Development. And I think the, you know, the Swiss government, uh, through the SDC, has been really one of the pioneers in, in, in putting this vision to the fore, and, uh, and I'd like to, to thank you very much and, uh, and leaving you the floor now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecile, and I also would like to uh, thank actually IOM to organize this launch today when we are uh, on a mission to Brussels, so it's a nice coincidence to be here. Um, I feel that all the important things have already been said, so maybe I just want to re-emphasize one point and then say a few words about why Switzerland. So, um, for us, the, the point of the narrative, I think that's something that we are all concerned about and that is important for everybody. And the work that we have been partnering with, with IOM for a few years now is really also a way to counter that narrative. So it's really to see migration as a phenomenon that is neither positive nor negative. Uh, it's neutral in itself, but it's up to us to, to make the best out of it. And I think this guide will, will hopefully make a contribution to that. It's about effective migration governance. It's about managing migration. It's about acknowledging that migration is here to stay. So let's all work together to make it, to make it work. Um, so why Switzerland? Uh, some of you may know that Switzerland actually is one of the champions in a, in a, in a whole of government, uh, governance approach uh, towards, towards migration. So we started this almost 10 years ago and we have now a functioning system involving all the, all the, um, the, the relevant ministries and agencies and we meet regularly and we talk about migration issues and I think that's part of our success story and that's part why in Switzerland so far we still have a, a, a rather nuanced, uh, I would say, um, discussion about migration issues. So I think we are well positioned to, to partner with you on this work. And then a second point why Switzerland, it's really because it's a practical guide and, and we are usually, we, we, we like to be practical. 
the, on the populations in, in the partner countries. So um, we all want to have a, a snack, I guess, and something to drink. So I thank everybody who is here uh, very much. And I hope that you will also take these guides with you and basically spread them in, in your organizations in the partner countries. And, and hopefully then on one of my next missions, I will see it on the table of uh, some government <laughs> official. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Simon. Very much appreciated. So, do you have questions? Because I, I think you know this is not meant to be us just preaching you, but we, you know, we really hope this is as well a dialogue. And so, so I was wondering whether some people in the in the audience had any comments that you'd like to make um, or questions potentially. So the, the, the floor is open. Thank you for saying me. <laughs> okay, now thank you for these wonderful uh, presentations. I think very timely. Uh, my name is Peter Borg. I work for the European Commission for many years. And I'm extremely um, impressed by this work, uh, the presentation. I have to re you know, they say the Commission, the European Union is working very slow. It's true. Uh, but when it moves into a certain direction, it has a certain impact. Uh, and I remember that the first communication about migration and development was in 2005. And I'm extremely happy to see that along the way, uh, you know, people try now more and more to understand actually what does it mean. And I think what is the important thing where we are now is that we are really, thanks to all the good work, and I really also like to thank the Swiss government for this because you have invested in this already ages ago. I think we now reach a stage where the IOM is part of the UN. We reach a stage where we have the development goals. We reach a stage where everybody recognizes we have to act on migration. And I think the approach is really an interesting one. Just one observation. Uh, I've been working in the migration area for many, many years. I, I've been working with Com Commissioner Malmström for many years. Um, but we have to realize that it is not migration looking at all those areas. I think it's extremely important. I mean, I guess many of the people around in this place have a migration background. But I think in this room, a criterion for success could be if in three years from now, we have the people from DG Health, we have the people from DG Environment, we have the, so that we look, they look from their realities to what does it mean for people. Uh, and, and also I'd like to add maybe DG Agri, I'd like to talk about the external action service. I mean, and I take it upon me. So give me copy, give me a number of copies of your of your leaflet, and I'll make sure that all of these directorates, and I happen to know all the people that are relevant for you, will get a copy of your publication. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Peter. This is really music to music to our ears. Any any other? volunteer for comments or reflections? No? I think we, we are we are okay. So thank you so much for, for coming. And um, yeah, let's take the opportunity of, of having food and drinks uh, uh, in front of us maybe to continue the, the dialogue. And, uh, Sorry, I have a question. The, the countries where you piloted, you didn't mention them. So you want to know the, the, the countries? Yeah. So these are Ghana. Uh, so we've both mostly worked in, uh, in countries in the, in the global south. So mostly in, uh, in, in African countries, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So you, you will see it uh, yeah, in there. But we also I want to say that we are pioneering this through the different regional uh, dialogues on migration that IOM is associated with. So we've been working with the League of Arab States. We've been also working with the Puebla, Puebla sorry, process most recently. And we're trying to really mainstream the usage of these guides throughout the regional processes on migration that exist. So we're trying basically to, obviously we are indeed um, focusing, as I said, on the national as well as the local level, but also the regional level, which is a very important piece. So, yeah, that's, that's also what we are in the making. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for coming.